I've been incredibly privileged um, to sort of have the unofficial role, I think, of being the ambassador for OK9. They have just been so popular from the word go. Um, and of course, there are a handful of forces that had dogs, but they were sort of standalone, really. Uh, and we were incredibly lucky, of course, that, that Gary started it off within Sussex and we've been able to then expand it across and we have a number of very winning uh, handlers and of course they're dogs who do that uh, and indeed we also have one of our assistant chief constables who's now got uh, a well-being dog and so I think that ability to break down the barriers of rank as well has been really incredible. So the OK9 wellbeing Trauma Support Dog Service is something that came about um, as a result of uh, acknowledging a need for officers and staff to be more cognizant about their well-being uh, and the dogs are a great tool to get the message across that they need to have some time to step away from their desks from time to time to talk to colleagues um, and to talk to mental health first, first aiders and uh, peer supporters um, and talk more about how they're feeling and what's going on in their world. The dogs are used in a variety of ways and they can be anything from ad hoc visits into the offices. Obviously the, the handlers are trained to check to make sure everybody's okay with the dogs going into that environment. Um, but it can also be for planned events, uh, mental health first aid, uh, mental health awareness, uh, anything that is going on where you're kind of raising awareness about self-care and looking after yourself. It's important that our staff and officers are fit and healthy and the dogs really help promote that. They're also used for uh, post-incident, so if something's happened and the, 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 you know, we've, had, we've used them where uh, sadly we've had officers or staff members who've died or taken their own lives, we've brought them in then to give people uh, that opportunity to go and interact with the dog uh, to express how they how they feel the dogs they've got uh, the ability to take some of the stress from us uh, and uh, we use them in diffuse meetings or trim meetings as well so it, it it gets people talking and opening up and that's that's the the key to them they they help they're a furry uh, bridge to communication they they open people up and they allow people to talk and process things that otherwise they'd find really hard to do so. Uh, and that's great because once they can process what they're going through, the brain is able to file it and they can move on. It helps them to be more resilient. Well, I think we currently have about 170 dogs um, across the country. I think it's about 31 different forces, and I know that that's going to grow really rapidly. Um, you know, I, I, it would be aspirational, of course, for every force um, to have uh, Oscar Kilo 9 dogs uh, because of the benefits that they bring. Uh, so as long as we have managed growth in a careful way, which does follow that governance, uh, then I actually think the world's our oyster. Uh, and of course, it's being picked up hugely by other emergency services and other organisations because they can see firsthand the benefits that it's brought to our officers and staff and volunteers.